Fields to start our meeting. Good morning. We will call to order the Board of Trustees special call board meeting today, Thursday, July 23rd. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glenn, let's start. First of all, thank you for coming in early. Um, I do appreciate this. Um, if Zach, if you pull up the revised school start date and calendar, uh, this has been tough for me as a as personally because I feel like I'm backing up and I just don't want to back up. But the start date we had set on the 18th, and when you talk to our principals and with the three choices and trying to do scheduling. We just feel like that it's imperative that we back that start date up from the 18th to the 24th. And we were able to go in and move, um, move some of our weather makeup days around. And um, our end date is still the same. If I can see, and it, we're still getting out on June the 3rd would be our last day for school. So uh, we were able to move those around. We also, we put the leap days in. Are they up there also? Yes. The 10th through the... 10th through the 14th will be our leap days and we'll be inviting our students to come in during that time for uh, assessment and um, and what we need to do with that. Any other questions about that as you go through and scroll and see? It's pretty much the same with the exception of the makeup days. And we moved some um, in-service days around. You'll notice we have five at the start now versus three. We normally do three. The reason we did that is because we feel like our teachers are going to need a little more time to get in their building and adjusted to all the new stuff that with the just the scheduling and um, that they'll need more time in their classroom getting ready. Questions on that? No so questions. teachers come back when? Teachers come back on the 17th the will be their, be, be their actual start date and that'll be the date they'll be required. The leap days are the week before oh. and um, as I said before we want them there we need them there, but it's still optional because they they're it's not mandated that they be there. And it's only K through eighth grade that can actually come during the leap days. Anyway, that's what what'll be reimbursed to us by the state. What is the final date that the parents have to make up their mind? What track? What model they on the on the choices? Yes. A Monday, Monday the twenty. What is that? Twenty seventh. Seventh. Yes. <coughs> Monday the twenty seventh. Let me ask you this: so if we're gonna start a, a little later. <coughs> give them a few more days because a lot of people is having a hard time. Well, you know, we're going to take a survey down on the 27th, but people we hadn't been able to get in contact with will be calling. I know we had we had one school yesterday, an elementary school, brought several of their teachers in, and they called every single student in that school yesterday. And, of course, that's not Greenwood High. It's, a, it's an elementary school with about five or 600 kids in it, but they were able to call them all yesterday to talk to them to make sure they understood they need to fill it out and, and answer any questions that they had and it, it went it went well for the ones that picked up the phone i said so uh um, our people are out there working we're paying people to come in to uh, help get that information to us so we can make that schedule i think right now we were at, last time i looked we were what 3600 3600 of our students have filled out survey which is it's over a third so that's that's pretty good getting close to that half mark so you're out there listening in Facebook land or wherever you're at and make sure you fill out the survey so we can get that information and choose, choose the path that's best for, for your child and, and, their, and your family so that we can educate them. I don't know a lot of people are having a tough time with making that decision. It's a tough decision and you know and I don't hopefully hopefully it doesn't become political with anyone and they do what's best for their child because that's what we're trying to do. It's the reason we're giving the choices. When is the uh do you remember off the top of your head when the start date is for the 21-22 school year? It's the it's the uh, 20. I, I don't have that in 22nd, front of me. 22nd of July, somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay. I mean that would be the the nine weeks and then two modified calendar. Okay. So, so we're. Yes, go ahead. I was going to say, so we um, have moved the start date back to um, August 24th, which keeps us with the same end date. Yes. Okay, which will hopefully give our folks a little bit more time to get things in place. Well, for me, it was one of those situations where if people have things planned after at the end of school and they've already had those vac vacations planned, they're, they're not having to change anything at the end. You're, mm -hmm. It's a delay of coming, so it shouldn't change, it shouldn't change vacation time. Okay. Next up will be
will be. I think we have to have a motion on that and we oh, have I'm to have sorry. a vote. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Chairman, I'll, um, I'll make a motion that we adopt the revised school start day calendar. Okay. Motion by Ken. Second. I second. Johanna, second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed. Hey, Tony, are you still on or, or David? Either one of y'all? Tony, can you hear us and you can vote one way or the other? And He was driving, so he may or may not be able to enter out. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Well, <coughs> all in favor. There we go. Uh, Mr. Whit. Madam Chair and, and members of the board, if you, this is a, <coughs> excuse me, a proposal or policy that we put together with regards to face covering. And uh, this is a uh, obviously be a new endeavor for us, and we've tried to spend some time in, in thinking of the various scenarios and things that we would like to do. For the, we, and this is uh, as it relates to our students. Um, and without reading through it, I'll just give you some highlights of, of what we have uh, have, have uh, addressed in this policy. First of all. This is as relates to this is as relates to the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is not this is something we hope will be short-lived. Um, but again, this is specific to the COVID-19 as what we in the pandemic that we're in now. Um, the bullet points we make there that obviously we, we think that uh, social distance to the extent possible is 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 important, and we say to the extent possible there may be situations that uh, because of space. Uh, that persons can't, but at every every opportunity, we want to 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 be sure to promote that among our students. Um, face coverings. Uh, we made a point to that this would be face covering that would cover the nose and mouth, and that um, um, again making reference to when social distances is not possible. There may be there again. There may be, depending on scenarios and situations where uh, uh, that would not be necessary. Now we did go got a little, little bit more specific in the third bullet. We talked about um, those face coverings should be worn on on the school bus. That's a very confined area on the school bus. Although we're reducing, we we limited the number of persons on a bus, but that's still a very uh, uh, confined space. With relates to the driver and the children. Um, obviously, while entering and exiting the vehicles, that will be if they're coming to school. Those may be car riders, uh, in the hallways, restrooms, and the cafeteria, media center, which is kind of the common areas where you may have multiple numbers of persons uh, moving around or, 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 or going from place to place. And this is what we think is very significant in this port and on other areas of the campus as directed by school staff. We think it's important to try to give our staff members, be it teachers, be it bus drivers, the, uh, the liberty of saying to a child or saying to the class you need to put on your, as an example, you know, you may be in a reading group and where the children may be a little bit closer and which would be obviously a time to everybody put on their mask or face covering versus where you're in a class, people are spread their social distance apart, where there wouldn't necessarily be the need to do that. But we want to put that in the hands of, hands of the, the staff member in that classroom or on a bus where I'm only have, I may only have two, two bus riders. You know, I could easily put them, space them in that bus, but I want, we thought it would be important to give some, because the reality is, <coughs> um, I think some of us have, have, have discovered as, ri as wearing those face coverings, um, to say that we're going to wear it all day, the entire day, when there's not a need to. Again, it's based on need, not necessarily just because it's all day. 
depending on the, the, the circumstance. So we're, we're trying to be what we also is being, being somewhat reasonable and not, not putting a, a, an undue expectation on, our, on the student or on the staff member who too may, depending on the circumstances, um, depending on their level of comfort, because we all know the most important thing for all of us, if we're safe, if we feel safe, we can make other decisions and other things that we'll do uh, wherever it may be, whether that's in our homes, in our workplace, uh, if we're out traveling. So that's so important. So we, we're trying to leave some of that control, depending on the circumstance, in place with the uh, staff member. Um, <clears throat> we also um, um, looked at, we want whatever those face coverings, because first of all, the school will have them. We'll have them at the school. But however, there may be families who may want to have already purchased various face coverings they want their child to wear. That's fine, but we do want them to keep in mind if it's something that's offensive or that may cause a disruption, uh, we, we certainly think that, that it's important for them to understand that prior to coming and that school staff, if they have to deal with that, they want to do, because we, we don't want that, that to be an issue as well. Um, <clears throat> Continuing to, to emphasize the significance of hand washing and sanitizing. Obviously, when you come into the building, uh, doing those, doing again those things that that CDC DHEC says is important: social distance, face coverings, hand washing. You know, those are the things as we read the literature, it talks about it over and over again. And uh, we also did make make reference in the, if there are persons uh, who because of uh, some documented health reasons or if there's some religious beliefs that, that uh, they're unable to, uh, to wear a face, <coughs> excuse me, to wear a face covering, that person or that family, uh, we'd ask that they contact the principal so that they can sit and, and discuss that situation and see what, what, would, be, what would be the best resolution. Um, and also, if there become situations where, um, uh, where the, the, the child is, you know, for whatever reason, is not saying not social distance as they should and as they've been warned over and over again, then, or there are situations that with the mask, I'm not wearing it when it's reasonable that they should be wearing it, and that teacher or the administrations had to deal with that person over and over again, then we think, you know, after, they've, after they have served with, they've warned the person, the child, that they've had conferences with the parents, then it, it we thought we'd put it on. It, it may come to a situation where um, that particular child, that we may need to look at a different kind of setting uh, for them. Again, not, nowhere we're talking about just denying them education. Uh, we'll continue the instruction, but it may not be in that same format. It may be in a different format. As you know, we have other formats, including virtual, that uh, for some people, we have some of our families are choosing now. And <coughs> the final uh, is just also just reminding some parents, giving some scenarios that parents we want them to do each day, uh, going through a health uh, checklist in trying to make some determinations whether they should send their child to school. And we're likewise, we're saying that to our staff. We're doing this now. You know, before coming, if there is a potential that uh, illness or, or, or as you see, uh, one of, you know, there's a list of, of one of those particular items that like if there's a fever over 100.4 greater, um, they may have been exposed to someone who was uh, tested positive for COVID-19 as an example, then we're saying we need for you to stay home. And we say likewise again to staff members. So just, a, just an overview of the various things we've listed there, and I, I would be certainly very happy uh, to answer any questions and uh, to help you, because I know this is a, uh, uh, this we think is, 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 is a crucial part as we talk about reopening schools and, and Believe me, we've had a lot of discussion, <laughs> a lot of discussion uh, about what to do and how to best do it 
So, uh, Madam Chair, I'm certainly open to any questions or concerns or, or any, any uh, changes or uh, things that you think we need to do differently. This is, again, this is just a recommendation. Thank you very much. I'll open it up for discussion. Will bus drivers have masks available if a student can't turn a student away from getting on the bus. That's correct. That's correct. We, we would, you're right. We'd have to, we need to have those available on the buses too, yes. And, and, and keep it in mind, and, and if, if for some reason we've run out that day, I think we, we still got to bring that child to school. Are we going to make this a rule? Yes, it would be a rule, yes. You know, that, this has been something that's been real, it's been hard for me to decide which way to really go. Um, but when you you know, we're, we're here to educate kids. That, that's what we do every day, and it's to educate and to respect others and to protect others. We, we do not expect these kids to be all day in a mask. I can't stand to wear one, and it's like today. I wore mine in. When I got here, I sat down. I'm, with them. I'm, I'm outside six feet. I'm comfortable I'm outside six feet, so I'm able to take the mask off. You know, and, and even if you look at it, when they're coming into school, it's critical. On that bus, it's critical. Once they get in that classroom and that teacher's able to put eyes on them, he or she's going to know whether that child's feeling good that day or not feeling good that day. And if they're not feeling good that day, they need to send them up to the office so the nurse can actually look at them. It's not only going to protect us from COVID, it's also going to protect us from flu or cold or anything else they have going on. So, and in common areas, we can't always be social distance, and I think that that's just, that's just teaching our young people respect to respect others, <coughs> to try to protect because really when you put the mask on, you're not protecting yourself, you're protecting somebody else around you more than anything else. So um, I finally have peace about it. You know, I feel like that this is not something that we're trying to, it's not a I got you for our kids, because we're still gonna educate them, but we also need to teach them to respect each other and to respect other people. So that's, um, I'm very thankful and, and I appreciate Mr. Witt and all his hard work. It was a, it was a team collaboration yesterday. We had so many people on the Google Docs and trying to put this thing together, and uh, I, I'm really happy with the outcome. I, I just want to say I know that this has been a very polarizing uh, t topic of discussion for both city council and county council, and I think this is a completely different arena. It's it's completely separate from what they've been debating about, um, and you know we have talked about. We need, to, we, we need to do everything we can to protect our, our, our faculty, our staff, and, and the students is, is the number one priority here. So, you know, again, I think the public needs to realize we're talking about the entrance points, the buses, the hallways, and, and that's it. They get in the classroom and it's to the teacher's discretion as if they need that mask or not. But just like you said, we're not wearing our mask right now. We wore them coming in. But now we're kind of sitting down in the classroom, so to speak. So um, I, I just applaud the district for, for going in this direction, and I'm, I'm completely on board with it. I Absolutely. think the public need to know that we want to keep them in school. We don't want to start and have to stop. We do. That's, no, that's correct. Exactly Absolutely. Right. Excellent point. Absolutely. That's a great point, because we want them there. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, as sure as I'm sitting here, I really don't think that the federal government's going to waive testing. We're going to be held accountable. So we have to put that in our mindset, and we're held accountable anyway. To me, I'm held accountable. Our teachers are going to be held accountable. We have to teach them. And we want to do the best we can to make sure that they stay safe so we can stay in school. And clarify one more time, it's a face covering. Covering. Not, not a, a mask. No, it's not a mask. So face it's a covering. face covering, so they can yes. wear one of the gator pull-up things are, if they yes. wanted to. That's correct, yes. 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 What yeah, the only thing specific we said again, as long as it, we just asked that it covers the nose and mouth. Well, that's the reason we put anything in And there's just particular... So particular patterns or It'll be. things of that nature that's to the principal's discretion right on that. as long as again the two key thing we're saying there something that's not offensive and doesn't cause a disruption in school yeah. and, and offensive it's going to fall more along dress code lines mm -hmm. like shirts or pants or anything someone wears if it's something that's offensive or you know then of course we'll ask people to take it off and that's the right that we have to do that well yeah. i'm offended by the tiger paw <laughs> no, he just can't hate on them all the time. That's all it is, Clay. <laughs> Are we worried at all about this being just something else teachers having to to enforce and and kids not wearing them properly? And some teachers are really sticklers, like you know if they're wearing it below their nose or it's just sitting on their chin. And 
some teachers are sticklers and they're on them all the time and some are just like whatever and you know the inconsistencies and well miss so-and-so said i don't have to wear it under you know over my neck or you know how are we gonna find that happy medium and in, in all day every day not be about face coverings in common areas um you know you're absolutely correct in terms of is it going to be a challenge is it going to be one more thing for the administration for the teachers to deal with but keep in mind what we heard was we talked to the principals administration as we talked to uh, uh, teachers and staff members uh, for their safety we did hear we heard from them and that they were con we're they're concerned and we're concerned so it's not as Dr. Glenn said earlier. It's not we're not we didn't put it together for it to be a, a kind of a gotcha one more thing to, but we think in terms of safety, that to protect our staff members, to protect the children, and do as much as we can to mitigate the spread. Um, we think this is something to do. In fact, I was I was reading in the paper earlier this morning uh, the, the number of uh, stores and in the areas, you know, the Walmarts, the CVS, the Walgreens, uh, the Publix. Uh, I went to, to get dinner the other night for my family and uh, there's a sign that says, no mask, no enter. <laughs> uh, so it's, 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 it has become a part of our community. And, and uh, so we, uh, but, we but again, we, we certainly want to stress, we want to stress that this is about safety, um, that we don't want this to become one other issue that I'm just, Gerald, you don't have to have Gerald, Gerald, Gerald. But however, on the other hand, for that person who choose for whatever reason not to be cooperative and, and, and respectful of their, of their peers, then that may put others at risk. Uh, we don't think that, that's, that that would be fair to their peers because person A decides that uh, I'm just going to do as I want to do and, 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 and so we're trying to make some balance but we're not going to suspend him we're not going to send him home but we ought to have some conversations with him and find out what is it what is it that we can do intervene that we can do so that uh, um, you and I'm using myself as a Gerald because you're part of this community you know, we're, we're, we're in this pandemic together trying to work through it as communities, as a community. So, so, you know, the child, as a teacher, as all of us adults have a part in trying to make, in, in to make this uh, as well and as safe for everyone. The feedback that I got from their teachers and parents, um, this falls right in line. They said, we think we should have it in the community spots, I mean, where everybody's gonna be in mass gatherings, but in the classroom, for my classroom, I wanna be able to see my children's faces and they need to see mine, so I think this falls in line with the majority of the feedback I got. Well, some, of the, some of the children got help from, and they, they just can't sit there for six hours with a mask. That's right. I can't sit there for six hours yeah. with a mask on either, <laughs> Mr. <Ryan. laughs> and you know, and, and if, like Mr. Mr. Witt said, if it gets to the point where they just completely refuse then then you're talking about disobedience and we're in a completely different realm mm -hmm. um, of defiance and then that that's that falls on a, that falls on a different scale when it comes to uh, this right responsibility I'd also I'd also encourage you know when I was in high school even middle school whatever um, a big part of the socializing was either shaking hands or hugging uh, they, I mean that was a big part of it uh, so I would encourage our principals to, you know, do the elbows. To, to well, that's my, what I, when I see people now, this is what I do. <laughs> yeah. that's, a good, that's a great way to, no, and no contact. It, that, yeah. yeah, I like it's it. It's about the heart. But, you <laughs> know, Mr. Witt, Mr. Witt said something really important, and that is, at the end of the day, this is temporary. It is temporary. Yes, we have been stuck in this for four months. Yes, it stinks. Uh, and yes, it's going to keep going for a little while longer, but at the end of the day, it's temporary. So uh, Mr. Wright said, you know, we want to keep everybody in school, so yeah. just work with us, Greenwood. Um, you know, we've, I think everybody's kind of works really hard to meet in the middle as far as the different schedules, uh, different options that are available. So just let's, let's keep this, let's just hang on just a little bit longer. 
Are we planning on posting this symptom list on the front? I visited a school yesterday, and they had a had a, that symptom list on the front door, and it said, you know, if you have any of these symptoms, please call, go back to your car, call the nurse. It was something to that effect. <coughs> That's so in line with every I, other business that yeah, I Yeah, I know into. most I mean, businesses are doing that, but I just thought that would be a good idea for us to post this also, if we hadn't already. Uh, yes, if you notice, at the point we also talk about visitors. If we talk about visitors, the visitors who are coming to the facility. Um, those are the questions they'll be asked before we, allow, before we allow them in. And we also are working on signs that we'll have posted throughout our, our schools. We have a committee that's putting together the language and signs, whether that's on the front door, signs throughout the facility. Uh, so yes, to answer your question specifically, yes. In fact, we are encouraging. We're going to be. We're encouraging parents and people who want to come to school. If the business can be handled over the phone or through a, a teleconference, then that's the way to do business. We'll do business that way because we do. We are going to restrict uh, people coming into the facility. Do we need a motion for this? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We'll take a motion for the policy regarding face coverings. Paul, make a motion. A second? A second. Clay, make a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, all those opposed. Mr. Trent, I think he's online now. Can you hear us, David? Yes, sir. Would you like to I'm make him? He's in favor. Very good. Well, Mr. Bowers, are you still online? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Policy GCC professional staff leaves and absences. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I put at your seat a uh, copy of policy GCC and GDC. Um, these policies are similar, so if you'll allow me, Madam Chair, I'll, I'll speak to both of them at the same time. Um, policy GCC deals with our professional staff leaves and absences, and GDC is our support staff leaves and absences absences. The only difference between the two, um, the title at the top for GCC says professional and the title at the top for GDC says support. All the language in within the policies are exactly the same. Um, what we are proposing is to take our personal, what was personal leave and sick leave and put it in a bank of days known as paid time off. Um, so that employees, and you'll see the bulleted list as you look down the middle of the first page, depending on how many days they work per year will determine how many days of paid time off. Uh, we're not proposing increasing the days, it's the same amount of days, but instead just combining all of those days into one bank. So instead of if I work um, 180 to 195 days, in the past I got eight sick leave days and four personal leave days. With this change in policy, I would have a bank of 12 days and how I use them is up to me as the employee. So it wouldn't be distinguished as sick and personal. Um, we are not uh, proposing any changes to our FMLA policy is within this. Bereavement policy stays the same. Military leave, organ donor leave, civil leave, all of those policies will remain the same. Um, we also will retain the first five, last five policy which states that employees must be present for the first five student days and the last five student days, unless of course they're ill um, and they cannot make it or someone in their family and their immediate family is ill and cannot make it. Um, but obviously we need everybody on board uh, those first five school days and last five school days. Um, so again, it's just taking away sick leave and personal leave and putting it into a bank of days that employees can use as they see fit. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. This doesn't change the whole accumulation process and any of that, or, you know, no. if you could get paid out for having a certain no. amount of time the, or anything the like that. the same amount, how we paid out in the past, it will still be the same. None of that would change. I know, personally, my organization has just gone to this. Um, I think it kind of gets us a little more current, if you will, um, and maybe a little more in the professional, I mean, trying mm -hmm. to treat folks in a yes. professional manner, letting them determine. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, a very good change. Yeah. This doesn't affect the pooling of the day. I know we you put a policy together 
where you could borrow eight days from, a, right. from the pool. And no, it does not affect go. the leave bank policy. If employees choose to participate, they donate, they give one day at the beginning of the year. And then if they are out for an extended leave of absence, 20 days or more, if they are a member of the leave bank, whenever their paid leave runs out, they're eligible to get 60 days of paid leave from the bank. I'll make a motion we adopt board policy GCC. All right, second. A second. All right. All in favor? Raise your right hand. All opposed? I'm sorry. You seconded? Yeah, Mr. Cobb, Mr. Cobb made the motion and Ms. Um, Craig seconded. Anything on the line? Dave. David, you're still there? Yeah, I agree. And then we can go ahead with the board policy GDC because Ms. Loudon already explained that. So we'll take a motion. I make a motion to accept board policy GDC. Johanna with the first. Anybody with the second? I'll second. Then with the second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Mr. Tramp. In favor. Okay. Thank right. you. No opposed. Thank you, Ms. Loudon. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, with no other business on the agenda, we will adjourn. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thank you. I hope you're feeling better.